that was awesome. That was awesome. Praise be to God. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's good to have you here this morning. If you're visiting with us this morning, thank you for being here and come again. Amen. Um, as one pastor uh, had years and years ago, back before I became a pastor, used to say, come and visit us. We'll treat you in so many ways you have to like at least one. And therefore, you'll stay. But we do appreciate each one of you. And um, praise God that we have an opportunity to be here. Don't forget about the Board of Trustees meeting um, Tuesday evening at, at uh, 5 o'clock. Also, don't forget about the Bible study at 10 o'clock on Wednesday. If you can, come. But also remember, uh, you can log on and, and, and you can go back and view it as well as our worship service uh, um, each week. Any other announcements? Let's sing. to be with you this morning and we're going to sing together from the hymnal hymn 127 guide me all thou great jehovah if you will stand and join us as we sing hymn 127 
seated. As we share praises and concerns this morning, uh, we do want to um, uh, keep each one of these uh, uh, names that are in their bulletin in our prayers. We especially want to remember uh, Sandy Whit and uh, also Mary Sue in in your prayers, but especially Sandy. Um, And um, there's others uh, as well. So, um, do, do you have a praise this morning? I love praises. The bells are do what? The bells are Play it. Bells are playing as well. Hallelujah. <laughs> and say the name again. If you would fill out a, a card and leave it so I get the spelling right. Others. Yeah, Daryl had a birthday yesterday. He was all the 39 again. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> Others. Gene. Oh, mercy. Oh, I'm saying they have had such so much tragedy this year. So remember Jim and and all of the their family with the the passing of his sister. Others. Unspoken request by the uplift of hands. Would you bow with me in a word of prayer? Father God, I praise you for music. This just touches our hearts in so many ways. For musical instruments, that touches our hearts. Gives praise to you for grace divine. Father God, I just praise you for your grace. Grace that loves us unconditionally. Grace that is bestowed upon us even when we were unworthy and and even now, Lord, sometimes, oh my goodness, when I think of grace, I think of your mercy, I think of your forgiveness, and I think how unworthy, and yet you love us because there's no one loves us like you do. And now that abundant love, you 
bless us in so many ways. You're there for our needs. You're there in our joys. You're there in the birthdays. You're there in the celebrations of birth. You're there in the celebrations of, of uh, weddings. You're there. And, and whenever we call upon your name, you're there even when we don't call upon your name. But oh, what a blessing to call upon your name. What a blessing just to talk with you. What a blessing to just be in worship with sisters and brothers. What a blessing for the redeemed to gather together. What a blessing for this church and, and all the blessings that you have bestowed upon this church and, and the ministry and the times that they have reached out and been uh, so alive and helpful in th this community. What a blessing, Lord, to know that whenever we call upon you, as we call upon you on behalf of every name that is listed, but there are those that we particularly want to lift up today, those who are, who are having difficulties physically, those that are, have been to the emergency room this morning, those that are in the ICU like Miss Sandy, I pray for her. I pray for Mary Sue. I pray, Lord, for those who are, have upcoming surgeries, those who have just had surgery and, and are recovering. I pray your healing grace upon each one. I pray that your hand would just be with their families, their caregivers, those that are doing rehab, those that are in nursing homes and those that are in assisted living and those who are in prison, those who are addicts and those who are recovering addicts. Lord, those who are once again on the, on the battlefield of, of working in hospitals, for doctors' offices and nurses and for first responders and all that they go through and all that they do and, and, and that they put their lives on the line. I pray also, Lord, for our military and I want to pray for our leaders of our country and the leaders of our church and I pray, Father, for our church. I pray for every church where worship is being held today, and I pray, Lord, that your spirit is uplifted, and I pray that your name is glorified, and I pray that we'll hear the Spirit's call and, and the direction of the Spirit in our worship today. I praise you, O Lord, for being our God. I praise you for Jesus, and I praise you for the Holy Spirit, and I praise you for the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen and amen. Okay. Ooh, baby.
And I agree with that. Give us that old time religion. Amen. Mm, 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 mm. If it was good enough back in the day, it's good enough now. Amen. And I love it. All righty. <clears throat> I want to look at uh, a passage of scripture. Actually, um, uh, John chapter three. And um, I want to look at the first 15 verses. I added some. <laughs> and then I want to flip over to chapter 4. I added that as well. <laughs> oh, I know. You're, poor little Julie. She just, her and Jennifer, they just, said, they just think they had to put me up with. Y'all just put up with me on Sunday and Wednesday, and they had to put up with me every day. <laughs> Praise be to God. I'm, there's something on my heart this morning I want to talk to you about, and I hope you enjoy it. But oftentimes, we don't communicate well. We're going to talk about miscommunication this morning. Would you bow with me in a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, we just praise you, glorify your holy name for just an opportunity to read your word. It's such a pleasure, such a teaching tool, such a, uh, a tool for comfort, a tool for guidance, a tool that helps us to understand you and to, to know who you are and, and who we are in you. And so I ask for your, the anointing of the reading and the hearing of your scripture, hearing of, the, of your word. And may it be the word that you Lead us to preach this morning. And we ask this in the name of Christ, our Savior. And all God's children say, Amen. If you are able, would you stand for the reading of God's Word? John chapter 3, beginning with verse 1. Now, there was a man of the Pharisee named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, this man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can they, these things be? And Jesus answered him, Are you the teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness of what we have seen, but you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except he who is descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the servant in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That whosoever believes in him may have eternal life. And now chapter 4, beginning at verse 31. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know. So the disciples said to one another, Has anyone brought him something to eat? Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. Do not say there are yet four months, then comes the harvest. Look, I tell you, lift up your eyes and see the fields are white for harvest. Already the, the one who reaps is receiving wages and gathering fruit for eternal life so that the sower and the reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true. One sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. 
Others have labored and you have entered into their labor. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Now, as we look at the, the third chapter of the Gospel of John, Nicodemus comes seeking Jesus. Nicodemus realizes that there is something very special about Jesus because he says, you know, no one can do what you've done unless they were, had come from God. He believes that he came from God, but as of yet, he doesn't know and he doesn't understand that he is the Messiah. Then Jesus confuses Nicodemus more when he says, you must be born again. And then throughout all the other things that Jesus says to him, Nicodemus is just bewildered because he's not really sure what Jesus is talking about. In the fourth chapter of the Gospel of John, Jesus replied to the disciples in that 31st verse, just baffles them. Plus, they come and they see him talking to a Samaritan woman. Now, you got to remember, now, and let's just get the, the full picture. Jesus and the disciples have come from Judea, Jesus being tired. He sits down by the, uh, Jacob's well, and he's sitting there when this woman from Sychar comes out to draw water, and Jesus asks her, Give me something to drink. Well, she is amazed that Jesus would even talk to her because Jews and Samaritans, they didn't get along. Matter of fact, the Jews looked down upon the Samaritans. I like one thing that comes out of this. And I want you to think about what Jesus does as he talks to this woman. And he gives us, I think, a great lesson because, you know, when people look down on or despise a certain sect of people, and that happens many times, just as the Jews despised the Samaritans and looked down upon them, but think about how Jesus embraced this woman and how that he included her in, in conversation. And it made a difference in her lives. Matter of fact, it made a difference in that whole town. Just think about if you and I, despite who another person is, that we would share Jesus Christ with them. And who knows who might come to believe in Jesus because the, the word says in here that many Samaritans believe because of this incident. So think about that. Instead of hatred, instead of divisiveness, then, you know, kind of like the, the UT game last night, if y'all watched that. I'm telling you, I was never so disappointed at, at, at uh, uh, fans. And if you didn't watch, if you hadn't watched it, you don't know what I'm talking about. They didn't like a call deep in the fourth quarter. And so they started throwing water bottles and somebody, I, and I'm like a commentator, what was somebody doing with mustard at a, at a football game? But there was a, a jar, of, I mean, a, a thing of mustard laying on the field. They was uh, Lane Kippen. Uh, was hit in, uh, with a golf ball. And, they, and people were, were being injured by them throwing water bottles there, and, and the police had to intervene, and they had to stop the game. I mean, it's, it was halted about 20, 25 minutes. You know, right, folks, uh, when we think about this, confusion happens. Well, go on with the story. Jesus... Um, says to the Samaritan, Samaritan woman, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, give me to drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Well, that confuses her even more. And talking about 
drawing from a well. And so she, you know, Jesus goes on to say, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks of the, the water that I will give will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water welling up into eternal life. She doesn't understand. How are you going to draw from that well? You don't have anything to draw from. You don't even, and that well is deep. But when he says this to her, then she said, give me water, that water, so that I will not be thirsty or have to come here to draw water again. Jesus says, go call your husband. And she said, I don't have a husband. He said, you're exactly right. You've had five, and the one that you're living with now is not your husband. And this baffles the woman that Jesus would know that. I, I kind of wonder, I bet, how in the world did he know that? You know, have you ever tried to hide something from, from the Lord? Amen? Eh, can't be done. Amen? Well, about that time, the, the, the disciples return to Jesus, and they see him talking to this woman, but nobody says anything. The woman goes back to the village, and apparently the, the disciples had went to get food, and they begin to urge Jesus to eat, and, in, and, and this is what baffles them. <clears throat> I have food to eat that you do not know about. My food is to do the will of him who sent me and accomplish his work. So they're really worried, baffled, and they're bewildered, and they begin to wonder, well, does someone bring him something to eat? While we were gone, what, what does he mean? But you know, many times, Jesus' words and his actions, his parables and deeds he done, it baffled people. It confused people. Some of the things that he said, they didn't understand. Folks, we oftentimes miscommunicate, amen? The best that we do sometimes in what we say, we don't communicate well. I wish that I had always communicated well. Because oftentimes when there is miscommunication, it not only causes confusion, but sometimes it causes problems. And I'm going to tell you some of the things that I've said sometimes have caused not only confusion, but problems. Amen? And you've done the same, right? Miscommunication happens, and it leads to misunderstanding. But I want to tell you a little story called the W.C., and this, I think, explains miscommunication well. And I think we need to hear that because in today's culture, my goodness, miscommunication happens. People don't always understand, and I'm not sure people won't understand. But anyway, the story goes like this. In, in the days when you couldn't always count on a, a public facility to have indoor plumbing, there was an English uh, woman who was planning a trip to Germany, and she was registered at, to stay at, at a little small Zimmer or a guest house that was owned by a local schoolmaster and his wife. And so the English woman, uh, being concerned whether or not uh, that the guest house contained a WC, now in England, oftentimes, uh, you know, a, w, a bathroom was referred to as a water closet or a WC. So she writes to the man, to the schoolmaster, and asks him if there was, if it had a WC. Well, the schoolmaster not being fluent in English, he goes to the parish priest and asks him if he knows what WC means. And, and well, he didn't. And so they begin to ponder the possible meanings of the letters. And finally, they decided that they must be referring to a wayside chapel. Apparently, they concluded the lady wanted to know if there was a wayside chapel somewhere near the house. And so the schoolmaster wrote this letter following, to reply to the English lady. He writes, Dear Madam, 
I take great pleasure in informing you that the WC is situated nine miles from the house in the center of a beautiful grove of pine trees surrounded by lovely grounds. It is capable of holding 229 people, and it is open on Sundays and Thursdays only. <laughs> As there are a great number of people expected during the summer months, I suggest that you come early, although usually there is plenty of standing room. This is an unfortunate situation, especially if you are in the habit of going regularly. It may be some interest to you to know that my daughter was married in the WC and it was there that she met her husband. I can remember the rush there was for seats. Why, there were 10 people to every seat, usually occupied by one. It was wonderful to see all the expressions on their faces. You will be glad to hear that a good number of people bring their lunch and make a day of it while others wait until the last minute to arrive just on time. I would especially recommend your ladyship to go on Thursdays when there is an organ accompaniment. The acoustics, the acoustics are excellent, and even the most delicate sounds can be heard everywhere. The newest addition is a bell which rings every time a person enters. A bazaar is to be held to provide plush seats for all since the people feel it is long needed. My wife has been ill and she hasn't been able to go recently. It has been almost a year since she went last, which naturally pains her very much. I shall be delighted to reserve the best seat for you where you shall be seen by all. In fact, I look forward to escorting you there myself. With kindest regard, the schoolmaster. Wouldn't you just have loved to, to see that dear English lady's face when she got that letter? Now, I want to tell you what. If that happened in today's culture, people would be all up in the papers. Amen? And there would be a great backlash over this letter. I like this because it's a good example of miscommunication. Of one person not knowing what he was talking about. And a letter that went back, and I'm sure that caused that dear English lady to cancel her reservations. But I want you to think about this for a moment. You know, we need to be careful how we communicate and that we communicate well, that others understand us. And, and folks, when they don't, that we patiently tell them. And if you don't understand, don't get bent out of shape. I have never seen such a time as today as people getting bent out of shape over nothing, amen, or the least little thing. I think Jesus teaches us something. Now, Nicodemus didn't understand. The disciples often didn't understand. But think of the times when Jesus took them aside and explained to them what he meant. So I think that's a great example for us in how we communicate. Is that we patiently explain ourselves. And if you don't understand what someone is saying, then ask them. Amen? Ask. Kindly. <laughs> what do you mean? You know, there, there's, there's that defense mechanism. You know, when you say you, or you come with a tone, people put up a defense mechanism. So when you communicate, don't be like the schoolmaster. Know what you're talking about. If you don't know, then ask, learn, and then be patient, be understanding. And who knows? 
you might just strike up a conversation that will lead you to share in Jesus Christ and the salvation of a soul. Amen. So our invitation, our invitation this morning is this. Oh, Lord, help me to communi communicate well. And if I don't understand, may I be patient and ask with kindness and with sympathy. Would you do that as we stand to sing our hymn of invitation? On page 451, be thou my vision. Oh, Lord, give us vision, give us understanding, and help us communicate well. Amen. Be thou my vision. Thank you, O oh Lord, for our time together, for an opportunity to give, to give of ourselves, to give of our service, to give of our time, to give of our ties. Bless our ties, bless our giving to your glory and honor and for the upbuilding of the kingdom of heaven. And send us forth now, Lord in your mercy and your grace, to communicate well, especially to communicate about Jesus, in whose name we pray, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen and amen. Go forth in God's love and grace.